Hello, my name is Choi Yun Jae from Naver AI Lab. Today's presentation is about introducing several image to image translation models, including models that we have made. And I would like to show you some various applications. Image to image translation refers to the conversion of images of one domain to other images from another domain. There are a lot of applications that use image translation. For example, you can change the edge or label map to a real picture, as you can see above, or you can change the animal species as below. And if you see in your lower right, you can see a variety of styles on person's faces. Then shall we take a look at the image translation models? The earliest image translation model is called Pix2Pix. Pix2Pix is an image translation model based on GAN, which learns two modules simultaneously, a discriminator and a generator. First, the discriminator learns to determine whether a true pair or a fake pair by taking both an input image and a corresponding ground truth image as input, as shown on the left. On the other hand, in the case of a generator, learning is conducted in the direction of fooling the discriminator so that the generated output is close to the corresponding correct answer image. This is an example of a result of an image translation using pix to pix You can see here that the edge image is taken as an input and the actual picture is created. You can see a bag, cat, shoe, and person image being created. The next model I want to introduce is a model called Pix2Pix HD. As the name suggests, this model is an advanced model that allows Pix2Pix to, to be applied to HD quality high resolution images. If you look at the picture, you can see some residual blocks that have been added to the front and back to the generator used in the existing Pix2Pix. The added blocks and the skip connection help the generator to reliably convert these high resolution images. This is an example of the result of image translation using pix to pix HD. It takes an, uh, as input a high resolution label map that fills the screen and creates an actual photo. If you use pix to pix HD, you can translate the image considering the user interaction. For example, you can change the car design or even the road. The next model to introduce uh, to you is the model called Spade. Like existing models, you can create multiple images below by receiving the label map in the first horizontal line above. At this time, Spade can create an output image by reflecting the style of the reference images in the left vertical line. For example, if you input a sunset image as an input, you can see that the output image is generated accordingly. Shall we take a look at the Spade module? As shown in the picture on the left, Spade extracts gamma and beta from the label map through a convolution operation. Here, the uh, gamma and beta have the same size as the intermediate convolution feature. The feature is modulated by element-wise multiplication and addition uh, of the extracted gamma and beta in the intermediate convolution feature. The picture on the right is a schematic a diagram of the structure of the spade generator. The biggest difference of the existing pix to pix HD model shown above is not putting the label map in front of the generator. It means that every layer of the decoder part is put as an input and the label map entered as an input for each intermediate layer is used as the generator to translate through the spade res block. The spade res block is composed of two spade rocks, convolution and the activation described as earlier. This is a demo example using the spade generator. As you can see below, there are semantic palettes of various classes such as sky and the trees. The user can draw some stone smaller stones that are in the water and even larger mountains. So using Spade, you can probably accentuate the work of artists and photographers. Now let's look at the unpaired image to image translation models. The models introduced earlier require input and output pairs as training data. However, 
it is often extremely difficult or impossible to collect data considering these input and output pairs. For example, if you want to turn a cat into a dog, it is almost impossible to collect a dog image corresponding to a specific cat. To solve this problem, many unpaired image translation models have been developed. As you can see in the picture on the right, this model can perform image translation with no input and output pairs, just class labeling. For example, if you want to change a dog into a cat, you can perform image translation if there are only multiple images of cats and dogs respectively. A typical unpaired image translation model is called CycleGAN. The figure is an example of generating a zebra's image by taking a horse image as input. Here, the cycle GAN trains the generator to restore the horse image that was put as an input from the generated zebra image. This way, the generator will be able to perform the image translation by reflecting well without ignoring the input information, keeping in mind to restore it again. For example, if you can change only the texture of the horse to a zebra while maintaining the horse movement or background. This video is an example of turning a horse image into a zebra using CycleGAN, and it's very natural as you can see. Using another unpaired image translation model, like above, you can change the daytime image to a night or a winter to the summer. In addition, there are various applications that are possible. As you can see on the bottom, actual photos can be converted into paintings reflecting the styles of various painters. However, the models that I have just introduced have limitations. That is that the output image is limited to one. From the user's point of view, there might be cases where you want a wide variety of images. So next, I will introduce a multimodal image translation model that can solve the previously mentioned problem. On the left is an example of converting a leopard into a cat, and existing models such as CycleGAN have been trained to map a specific leopard picture to a single cat. On the other hand, multimodal translation models aim to generate multiple species of cats from a single leopard picture. Shall we look at a picture on the right? To generate various outputs, the generators of these models take a latent vector as well as an input image as an additional input. Latent vector can be viewed as ra random voice, usually sampling is done from Gaussian distribution. Even if the input image is the same, it is, impos it, it is possible to provide various output images by inserting a different latent vector. Also, these uh, models can be reflected well without ignoring the latent vector using an encoder. This video shows an example of converting a Siberian husky into a cat using a multimodal translation model. As you can see in the video, you can see that it creates cat images of various species and styles. In addition to that, you can also turn winter photos into various summer photos, and you can turn your cat into a variety of wild animals. And on the bottom, unlike pix to pix uh, models introduced earlier, you can create various real back photos from one edged edge image. Next, I want to talk about the multi domain image translation models. All of the models described above have disadvantages that learning is very inefficient if the image domain is increased to several. Take the season as example. Not only summer and winter exist, there's also spring and autumn. In this case, you should consider converting between a total of four domains. And the existing cross-domain models have to learn the generator for each domain separately. And as the number of domains increases, there's a problem that a huge number of generators have to be trained. To solve this problem, our team proposed a model called StarGAN. StarGAN is a model that can learn translation between multiple domains with only one generator, regardless of the number of domains. As you can see in the picture on the right, StarGAN's generator learns translation by receiving not only uh, the input image, but also domain information as an input in form of a label. Even if the number of domains increases, you only need to increase the dimension of the label so that you can efficiently learn translation between multi, uh, multiple domains with only one generator. 
If you use star again, you can create images for multi-domain with just one generator. For example, the color of hair, gender, age, skin color, and facial expressions can be all changed with just one generator. Let's move on after organizing the image translation models described earlier. Starting from the earliest image translation, pix to pix we looked at cycle again, which can perform image translation without an input-output pair. And then we also looked at models that can generate various output images, such as StarGAN, which uh, can if efficiently perform translation in multiple domains. However, the models described have limitations, except for StarGAN, all domains or all models have um, disadvantages that learning is inefficient because they need to learn multiple generators for multi-domains. StarGAN also has a disadvantage of not being able to provide various outputs for specific domains. Uh, can we look at the picture on the bottom? If you say you can change your expression, you can only generate one result for each specific expression. For example, there can be many happy and angry expressions, but StarGAN can only create one for each expression. So we were looking at these limitations from previous studies, and we recently proposed an image translation model that can solve all these problems. This is called StarGAN v2. This model name was called StarGAN v2 because it supplemented the shortcomings of StarGAN. If you look at the picture, you can see StarGAN v2 creates images of various styles for the Motane domain. In the case of human faces, the domains are classified into male and female, and you can see the various styles of female and male images are created for each domain. In the case of animal pictures below, you can see the various styles of images are synthesized for the three domains, uh, cat, dog, and wild animals. Here's a brief introduction to StarGAN v2. In order to select a variety of styles for each domain, we propose a multi-head mapping network, which allows you to convert latent codes into style codes for each domain. The generator of StarGAN v2 learns to create an output image by reflecting the style code on the input image, and it trains the generator to restore the style code again uh, by putting the generated um, output image into the encoder. Finally, the multitask uh, type discriminator is placed, and the training is conducted with the adversary loss in the branch according to each domain. StarGAN v2 can also perform translating by reflecting the style of the reference image. In the video, you can see the person's appearances and pose follow the source image, which is on the horizontal line above. And in the reference image, you can see the gender and the several styles that are followed. So the hairstyle, makeup can be changed. And this is also an example of animals. So the pose and shape is in the source. And then you can see the species um, or the breed and the coat's texture changing according to the reference image. Uh, wild animals can also be applied to this. Lions. Mm -hmm. So pretty much uh, this can also be applied as an example. In collaboration with Neighbor Snow Team, we released uh, StarGAN v2 to B612 event type service, and it was a service that provided a different image of myself in various styles by inputting my image, and it re received a really good response in China. So you can see image translation technology shows high performance enough to be applied in actual services. And the last model I want to introduce is the Coco Funit model. Unlike existing baseline models, this model receives both content and style images as input by the style encoder. If you choose a style by considering the pose or shape information of the content, you can change the style while maintaining the characteristics of the content image much more. Here's a comparison picture. Here you can see it is successful. If you apply the texture of the style image while maintaining the pose and shape of the content image, if you look at the red circle in the base um, line funnet, you can see that the pose shape and the content of the content image have changed a lot. But in the case of Coco Funnet at the bottom, you can see the pose and the shape of the content were well maintained in the generated image. So if you use uh, Coco Funit, full body uh, animal translation is possible. 
So you can see on the left the dog's full body and the species or the breed is changed while the pose is being maintained. So even for a bird, you can see the pose is, is maintained while the texture and the breed is changed. Lastly, I would like to introduce a few more applications using image translation and then end the presentation. There are studies that have extended image translation to the video domain as well. So you can see the pose information is extracted from the dancing video and the figure of another person is applied to the extracted pose information. If you use this model, you can make a video so that people who can't dance look very professional like entertainers or dancers. In addition, there's a study that uses image translation to convert sketch images into photographs. With this model, anyone who is not good at drawing can easily paint their own portraits. In this presentation, we have looked through various image translation models and their applications. If you're interested, um, please refer to these uh, papers and the code because they're all open source. Thank you very much for being such a great audience.